Hi everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne and I'll be taking a look at this Corsair Gaming K70 RGB Rapid Fire Mechanical Keyboard featuring the Cherry MX Speed RGB switches. Welcome to the birth of a new Cherry MX switch. Here's what comes in the box. First up is a quick start guide and these are your warranty guides. Included is a vacuum sealed pack with extra FPS MOBA keycap sets for your gaming needs. They're two-toned and textured so you won't have to look down from your screen to find them. There's a keycap puller tool as well. It's always nice when a wrist rest is part of the package. I like the soft touch finish on this one. On the other side are rubber feet to keep this piece from sliding and you use these two hooks to attach the wrist rest to the keyboard. Position the rest like this and snap it into place. Here's how it looks once it's attached to the keyboard. The keyboard comes with braided fiber cable and instead of the black and yellow gaming colors, the rapid fire has a subtle black and gray color scheme. You get two USB connectors. The one with the keyboard icon is meant to power this device, and the other connector is for the pass-through port at the top of the keyboard. Also on the top edge is a BIOS switch for toggling the report rate from 8 milliseconds to 1 millisecond. On the bottom of the keyboard are rubber feet to keep this unit in place on a smooth surface, as well as four angled feet for added height. Let's take a closer look at the keyboard. It measures 436 millimeters by 165 millimeters by 38 millimeters, and it weighs 1.2 kilograms. I'm glad to see an aluminum frame on this keyboard. It has a solid feel and premium look. More keyboards need this. The rapid fire, like the strafe, uses large font on the keycaps, so more light will shine through. It also features 100% anti-ghosting with full key rollover on USB. There's a textured spacebar sandwiched in between the two alt keys, and on the right corner of the keyboard is the brightness adjust button. There are three levels of brightness and no lighting. Next to that is the Windows lock button. A blue light means that Windows is locked. Red means Windows is unlocked. To the right are the num lock, caps lock, and scroll lock indicators. It's such a relief to see a dedicated volume mute button and volume wheel. You won't realize just how useful those two features are till you have to live without them. Another perk are the dedicated media keys. I'm sure some of you put these to great use. Here's a closer look at the Cherry MX Speed RGB switches. You get an ultra fast actuation distance of 1.2 millimeters, which is a little more than half that of a standard Cherry MX switch, which has a travel distance of two millimeters to actuation and four millimeters to bottom. The speed switch has an actuation force of 45 grams, much like reds and browns. I think FPS gamers will rejoice at this new speed switch, but typists will probably still prefer the standard Cherry MX because it's so satisfying to go the distance. It's time for the sound test. Enjoy my clacking skills. Now, let's take a look at the Corsair Utility Engine software. First up is the Profiles tab. Click New to create a new profile, and you can link profile to program if you want. Here's the option to import or export profiles. Click on this arrow to select a profile. I'll go with Adobe. This menu will allow you to edit or delete a profile, as well as save profile to device memory. Below Profile is Mode. This is where you can create additional profiles within a profile. Click the plus icon to create a mode. Let's create one called Premiere and another called Photoshop. Click here to edit or delete a mode along with other options. Let's pick Premiere and head into Assignments. Each mode will have separate assignments, lighting, and performance tabs. Mouse over the key you wish to assign an action to and right click. This menu will allow you to set a specific key to mode or profile selection switching, which can come in handy so you won't have to use Q every time you need to switch. To get to the macro editor, select Assign New Action. In addition to creating macros, you can also play with the other actions editors such as text, which could be useful for emails. Timer is pretty cool in that you can set timer countdowns via key press. And you can even link up your mouse. But back to macro, make sure you name it or you won't be able to set it. Check off any boxes you wish to add to the macro, like double macros, action repeat, and the like. You can even assign a lighting effect to the action. Press record when you're ready, type out the commands, and press stop when you're done. Press OK and the macro should be assigned to the key of choice. You can create actions directly through the Actions tab. Press New and begin. Select and right-click an existing action to edit or delete it. There's also the option to open up the Actions List menu and drag and drop an existing action directly onto your key of choice. Onto the Lighting tab. Let's go over standard settings first. Highlight an individual key or group of keys, right-click into a menu, and add to group. If you don't add the selection to a group, then you won't be able to assign ripple or wave lighting effects to that set. You can select background color as an underlayer to whatever lighting effect you create. Choose from the pre-selected colors or open up the color wheel for more options. Right-click to assign new lighting. Let's pick wave and remember to name it. Right-click to add intensity tabs. You can move these tabs around too. Then right-click again on each tab to edit for color. I'll make each of the intensity points a different color. You can adjust the tail, velocity, and the like, as well as how and when the lighting effect starts. 
When you're done, press OK. You can delete or create a new group in this area. Just like Actions, there's another lighting tab here. Create a new lighting by clicking here, or edit and delete existing effects. Open up the effects list to drag and drop lighting onto individual keys or groups. Click on Advanced Settings to access some cool preset lighting effects. You can choose Select Lighting Effect and highlight the group of your choice to set a background color to. As for the special effects, we'll start with Spiral Rainbow. Click the pencil icon to change the speed and direction. I prefer the setting on slow, and here's how it looks on the keyboard. This is a good effect to show off the keyboard's colors. Next up is Rainbow Wave. I like the fast setting going upwards. This one is a classic. Well, since the inception of crazy RGB colors on peripherals, Moving down the line is Visor. You can toggle the speed and the colors from random to alternating. I prefer to keep Visor on random colors because ever-changing colors swishing back and forth is never boring. The rain effect is so lovely. It's a personal favorite of mine. Once again, I prefer to keep this lighting on random colors. It has a soothing effect and looks like April showers. Color shift is an effect I prefer to keep in fast mode. Well, for the purposes of showing you how it looks. You can choose alternating colors if you have two colors you're partial to, but I'm keeping it on random for show. Color Pulse has a smoother breathing effect compared to Color Shift. The background color provides a stark contrast when the breathing effect dims. I kind of like it. Color Wave is like Rainbow Wave, but less dramatic and not so continuous. I pick the wave going right instead of having it go upwards to change it up. As you can see, there's a different color with each wave because I did not select alternating colors. Type Lighting Key is the most sensible choice in my opinion for daily use. It's not loud or distracting in any way, and yet it provides some lighting for effect. I'm usually not in a dark room, so I don't need the LEDs to be on at all times. Finally, we have Type Lighting Ripple. It's the same idea as Type Lighting Key, except with ripples. It sure is pretty when pressing one key at a time, but when you input multiple keystrokes repeatedly, it starts to look like a rave. Good thing or no? I'll conclude the software tutorial with a few more things. Here's the Performance tab. You can disable or enable certain functions. In Settings, under Device, you can change the keyboard layout and update firmware. In Program, there's the option to play with General Settings, OSD Settings, and more. If you need the User Manual or Tech Support, it's all here. That wraps up this look on the Corsair Gaming K70 RGB Rapid Fire Mechanical Keyboard featuring the Cherry MX Speed RGB switches. If you like what you saw and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons, as well as follow me on social media. Joanne Tech Lover Facebook, Joanne Tech Lover again on Twitter, and Joanne Tech Lover once more on Instagram. Also, be sure to follow me on my other YouTube channels, JTL Lifestyle, JTL Cuteness Overload, and JTL Love Life and Advice. I guess I'll bid you adieu with a kiss. Mwah!